Hi everyone, today we will be finishing Act 4. So we will be reading Act 4, Scene 3, 4, and 5. So at the end of Scene 2, Lord Capulet has just moved up the wedding by one day. So the wedding will now take place tomorrow. So Scene 3 picks up in the exact same night and it's Juliet in her room with her nurse. So remember that the nurse does not know about this new plan with the potion and Friar Lawrence. So Juliet says, Yeah, those clothes are the best. Nurse, please leave me alone tonight. I must pray for heaven to smile upon my situation, which is miserable and full of sin. Lady Capulet enters and says, Do you need any help? Juliet, No, madam, we have taken care of everything, and let the nurse stay with you tonight. I'm sure you'll have your hands full with all this sudden business. Lady Capulet. Good night. Go to bed. You must rest. So now Juliet is alone in her bedroom. And she's going to have to take the potion tonight if this new plan is going to work. So Juliet says, Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. A fearful chill runs through my veins. It freezes life's heat. Perhaps I'll call them back to comfort me. Nurse? No. What could she do here? I must do this alone. So Julia is holding the bottle of potion from Friar Lawrence. She says, Come, bottle. What if this potion does not work at all? Will I have to marry tomorrow morning? No, this will prevent it. Lie yourself here. She lies a dagger beside her. What if the friar gave me poison? to hide his shame for marrying me and Romeo. I fear it is, yet I know it isn't. He is a holy man. What if when I'm laid in the tomb, I wake before Romeo can come for me? Will I breathe the foul air and die before Romeo comes? Even if I live, it will be like death to stay in a dark tomb where for many hundred years, the bones of my buried ancestors are placed, where bloody Tybalt just laid in the earth lies rotting in his own burial gown. They say that night spirits live down there, and when the living hear them, they go crazy. No, it's not true. But won't I go just as crazy with fear? Will I go mad and pluck a bone from the grave and club out my own desperate brain? Oh, look, I think I see my cousin's ghost seeking Romeo, whose sword killed him. Stay, Tybalt, stay. Romeo, I come to you. I drink this for you. So she drinks the potion and it instantly works and she falls back on the bed. Really, she's sleeping, but now she looks like she's dead. So before I move on, she has a couple of concerns and questions and she's a little bit afraid to take this potion for a few different reasons. Number one, she says, what if the potion doesn't work? Well, her backup plan is to stab herself with a dagger or a knife. Question number two, what if Friar Lawrence is really trying to poison her so that he can hide the fact that he married Romeo and Juliet? And then concern number three is that what if she wakes up too early and Romeo's not there yet and if she breathes in the air of you know all the dead people around her will she die or what if she's stuck in there and she goes crazy so these are all things that she thinks about before she takes the potion but eventually she does take the potion for Romeo so stop there and fill in your reading guide for scene three scene four is very short um, so it takes place the next morning and they are getting ready for the wedding. So Lady Capulet says, fetch me more spices, nurse. Nurse, they call for dates in the pastry too. Lord Capulet, come, stir, the rooster has crowed. It's three o'clock. Take care of the baked meats. Nurse, get out of here, you house husband. Get to bed. You'll be sick tomorrow for staying up so late. Capulet, I have stayed up all night before and have never been sick. So everyone exits except for the servants. What do you have there? First servant. 
things for the cook, sir, but I don't know what. Capulet, hurry then. Boy, fetch drier logs for the fire. Call Peter. He will show you where they are. Second servant. I am smart enough to find them. I don't need to bother Peter for that. Capulet. Good point. Goodness, it is day. Paris will be here soon with the musicians. I hear him coming. Nurse, go wake Juliet and put her dress and dress her up. I'll go and chat with Paris. Hurry, I say. So at this point, it is about three, four o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. So they're about to go wake Juliet up for her wedding with Paris. So scene five, Juliet's room and the nurse is going into her room to wake her up. Nurse, Juliet, she is fast asleep, I think. Wake up, sleepyhead. What, not a word? Sleep a little now, sleep for a week later. My, how soundly she sleeps. I must wake her up. Madam, what? You are dressed in your clothes. I must wake you. Lady, lady. Oh no, help. My lady's dead. Oh, curse the day I were born. My lady, my lady. So Lady Capulet enters because the nurse is screaming that Juliet is dead. Lady Capulet, what is all this noise? What's the matter? Nurse, look, look, what a terrible day. Lady Capulet, oh no, my child, my only life. Wake up or I will die with you. Help, help, call for help. So Lord Capulet enters. For shame, bring Juliet out. The groom is here. She's dead, she's dead, oh, curse the day. Let me see her. Oh, no, she's cold. Her blood is settled and her joints are stiff. The life has long left her lips. Death lies on her like a frost upon the sweetest flower. Oh, sorrowful day, oh, sad times. Capulet, death has taken her away to make me cry. It ties up my tongue and will not let me speak. So here comes Friar Lawrence with Paris and the musicians. Friar, is the bride ready to go to church? So that the audience would find that kind of funny because at this point, Friar Lawrence knows that Juliet is not going to church to get married, but instead Juliet is going to church because he knows that she is fake dead. So Capulet says ready to go but never to return paris my son death has married your wife the night before your wedding day there she lies a flower picked by him death is my son-in-law death is my heir paris have i waited all morning just to see this lady capulet a cursed unhappy hateful day the worst hour time has ever seen oh poor child our one joy Cruel death has taken from her my sight. Nurse, it is the saddest day I have ever seen. Never was there such a day dark as this. Paris, I am tricked and divorced by you, death. You are cruel, O oh love, O oh life. Capulet, time, why did you come to kill our joy? O oh child, you are dead. My child is dead. With her my joys are buried. Friar, be still for shame. The cure for this disaster is not more confusion. Heaven and you had a part of Juliet. Now heaven has it all, and the better it is for her. You wanted to see her move ahead in life. That was to be your heaven. Now you cry, seeing that she has moved on to heaven itself. Dry your tears and lay flowers on her fair body. Dress her in her finest robes and bring her to church. Remember, though we cry... Where she has gone, she's happier than you or I. So Friar Lawrence, he knows that Juliet is not really dead. So he's trying to push the plan along. And he's trying to convince Lord and Lady Capulet to calm down. Juliet is in a better place. Let's take her to church and let's put her in the tomb. So Lord Capulet says, All the things that we had for a wedding are now for a funeral. Our instruments change to crying bells. Our wedding is now a sad burial feast. Our bridal flowers will now decorate her tomb. Everything must now be changed to the opposite. Friar, sir and madam go in. And you, Paris, everyone, follow Juliet as we carry her to her grave. Heaven has punished your sins with pain. 
Obey God's law so you won't be punished again. So again, he's pushing them to bring Juliet to the church so that he can follow along with the plan. So everyone exits except for the musicians and the nurse. First musician, let us pack up our pipes and go. Nurse, yes, put away your instruments. As you have seen, this is a sorry case. First musician, yes, though I think the case can be mended. Peter enters. Musicians, make me feel better and play heart's ease. First musician, why heart's ease? Peter, because my heart plays, my heart is full of woe. Oh, play me some merry tune to comfort me. First musician, no, it is no time to play now. Peter, I will find something to give you. Musician, oh, what will you give us? Peter, not money. How about this dagger? Second musician, hey, put that away. Peter, I will stab you with my wit instead. Explain something to me, musicians. It is said that when sadness wounds the heart, a sad song hurts your mind. Turn to music with a, her silver sound. Now why is it a silver sound? First musician, because silver has a sweet sound. Peter, why do you say? What do you say? Second musician, I say silver sound because musicians play for silver. Peter, and you? Third musician, I don't know what to say. Peter, it is music with her silver sound because musicians never get gold for anything. Ha! What a strange person he is. Second musician, forget him. Let's go in here. We'll wait for the mourners and stay for the dinner. So... The ending part of scene five here is really something called um, comic relief. And this is when you're, re when you're reading a tragedy or you're watching a tragic play, there's so much death and sadness that the writer wants to just break it up and give you something to f uh, funny to laugh at really quickly. So that's really all that's going on here with the musicians and with Peter. It's just something funny to laugh at. Um, but really, the main point here is that Juliet took the potion, um, and now everybody thinks that she's dead, except for Friar Lawrence, because he really knows that Juliet is not really dead. So he is carrying on with the plan. He is going to get her into the tomb, so that hopefully when she wakes up, Romeo and Friar Lawrence will be there to rescue her. So make sure you fill in your reading.